This call is now being recorded. Yes, so we can start. Good afternoon, everyone, and a very warm welcome to all of you. Well, my name is Ananya Sen, and I am a faculty at the Department of Journalism and Mass Communication, Shurendranath College for Women. Shurendranath College for Women has been a pioneering institution established in the year 1948, and its and its aim is to impart quality education to students, to ordinary students, making them all the more self-reliant and confident. Our department, that is the Department of Journalism and Mass Communication has followed the, the same trend that the college has been setting for itself since years now. And our college has also has taken the initiative to build up good careers of students and making them extremely confident in whichever field they want to take up in future. Well, our department, uh, once again, I would mention Department of Journalism and Mass Communication has been organizing this web lecture series since August uh, 22nd, that is uh, August 22. 2020 this year and this uh, it is it should be mentioned here that it uh, that is it is the uh, entire initiative has been taken by our HOD Dr. Uma Shankar Pandi sir it is his brainchild and uh, this is going to be the eighth lecture in the series well the topic of this web lecture today is the language of Indian cinema and uh, our speaker for today is Dr. Ritu Parna Das well, uh, before formally uh, introducing our speaker, I would like to uh, lay down some norms, some do's and don'ts that we really need to follow during this web lecture. Number one is, please do keep your audios and videos on mute to ensure that will ensure better bandwidth. Second point is that if you have any query, any question, you can just uh, right away post it in the chat box. It will be answered by the speaker herself. Uh, the next point is that uh, 10 to 15 minutes prior to the end of the session, there will be a feedback link that will be posted in the chat box. All you have to do is follow the link, fill up all the essentials that are being asked for, the credentials that are being asked for, including your name, your email address, and other details. Uh, please uh, make it sure that you, and you submit it very correctly, especially the names, because that is uh, what is going to be generated in the in the e-certificate. So please fill it up very carefully. Uh, so once again, 10 to 15 minutes before the end of the session, it will be posted, the feedback link will be posted in the chat box. Please do submit that. So uh, these are uh, some of the do's and don'ts. And yes, uh, last, not, not, but last but not the least is that please do not uh, present the screen by yourself. That's a humble request because that really distracts the attention of the speaker. Thank you so much. Now I'll take uh, the opportunity uh, to formally introduce our speaker, Dr. Riku Parna Das. The last speaker for today is Dr. Riku Parna Das, who herself is also a faculty of uh, this uh, esteemed institution, Srinandanath College for Women. As, once again, our speaker for today, Dr. Ritu Das, working uh, presently as an independent scholar uh, by the side of holding a position in the Faculty of Humanities, Shurandanath College for Women. She has completed her PhD from the University of Calcutta and has published several articles and chapters on different aspects of cultural studies, uh, cultural studies in various national and international journals and books. She has delivered in invited lectures and attended workshops in various esteemed universities like University of Graz, Austria, Cambridge University, Montreal University, and she is acting as the secretary of an Indian NGO dedicated to the welfare of underprivileged street children and women of West Bengal. So I won't take any more time. I would uh, readily uh, now welcome her, uh, Madam uh, Dr. Ritu Parna Das, uh, so, uh, ma'am, the platform is all yours now. You may please take it over. Thank you, Ananda, for that such a lovely introduction. First of all, I would like to thank Shurandanath College for Women for giving me this opportunity. And definitely, Dr. Pandey, sir, for uh, allowing me to speak. Please be there <laughs> and support me. <laughs> so, uh, uh, basically, I'll present. Ananda, can you just uh, turn on the PPT, please? Yes, yes, yes. So basically, this is a. Uh, I want to talk a bit about uh, language of Indian cinema. 
I cannot, I don't know if it is visible. Let me see. Yeah, it is visible now. Yeah. So basically, I'll be talking in, in very uh, brief about the language rather than narrative language of Indian cinema. Before that, uh, I'm not sure where we are standing right now. So uh, especially aiming for the students, I would like to uh, give a brief introduction regarding what do we understand by language of cinema itself. So, well, uh, to start with, uh, uh, I would like to, uh, Anona, can you go to the next uh, slide, please? Yes. So I'd like to start with Martin Scorsese, one very specific quote that I really like, that Scorsese says that like any story or the uh, written text, cinema is a text that uses even the language, like shot, camera, basic of uh, mise en scene. These all are actually the language we use to tell a story. When we use this grammatical language together and we uh, create kind of a sentence and kind of a paragraph and finally we see a story. So this is how we understand cinematic language. But fortunately, when we watch a film, we really do not, do not see it from that perspective. We are so engrossed in the film, we, we often miss this small nitty gritties. So as you can see on the screen, there are some... Uh, I'm, I'm sorry because these pictures are not very clear, but I'm sure you can understand from which films they are. The first one is from Rang De Basanti. The next one is Bahubali 2. The, the, the other one is from Three Dates, then Bajirao Mastani, and finally from Shole. So the reason for putting these pictures is to try to show what it means by a single frame. For example, the first one is a single frame. It's, it actually can be a single picture. Here we see a, a plane flying and four boys are excited and they are almost throwing off their shirts and they are actually jumping in joy. What does it actually signify? When we see the scene in the context of the film, we see it actually signifies freedom. But how did we understand that? we understood it from specific things. For example, the props used here, the camera angle used here, the composition used here, blocking of the characters and the main prop that is the, that plane used here. How do we use it and from which angle do we, do we capture it? This actually gives us the idea of how, like what the director or the maker of the film wants us to see. Next one you, you see, it is the ultimate scene from Bahubali 2 that uh, Katappa is killing uh, Bahubali. So this is a very important and very dramatic scene in the film where we see the fire blazing at the background and these two people killing one another. The next one, Three Dates, is actually is a moving shot uh, they're on the scooter and the camera is actually following them, tracking the, this is called tracking. So uh, the camera is following the three protagonists on scene. Next one is a dance sequence. It's a song sequence from Bajirao Mastani. So if we notice the composition on the wall, for example, we can see how the, um, the architecture, the set, the set and the characters sitting on the floor they it almost complement each other. It is also a moving scene. They are actually dancing with this um, the rhythm of the music. And also look at the costumes they're wearing. And that actually complements the background. The next one I am showing here is Shole's shot. I'm really sorry. This is a very blurry shot that I could manage to get. I'm really not very, <laughs> I, I can't manage those things quite well. Sorry for that. But uh, I think you, you know which shot I'm talking about. This is where just from the low angle, really uh, knee to foot level, the camera is placed and we are saying, Gabbar is walking. Kitne admi the. That is the exact shot I wanted to portray. Uh, can, Anona, can you go to the next slide, please? Here we see uh, the last was uh, the last uh, slide rather. We saw many people and many props on uh, scene. 
However, here we are seeing single individuals. And when we see the first one is from PK, and the next one is from Mother India, then Kagas Keful and uh, Jojita Wahi Sikandar. Now, if we look at this, these four films have different messages to give. And for that, starting from the color scheme, the kind of film it will use, the kind of setup. For example, in PK scene, we see Amir Khan standing clueless, wearing nothing, holding a, a stereo uh, in front of him in, the, like, in a place with a very depth of field that is creating the sense of cluelessness, isolation. On the other hand, we are getting almost a mid shot of uh, Nargis in, the, uh, in the, the next shot, actually, the mother India I'm talking about. She, she is being shown diagonally panning the, uh, the whole uh, frame, actually, we can see. And we can, the focal point of our notice is her face, where we can see the strife, her, uh, her struggle and her pain. Similarly, Kagas Gif, Kagas Keful, which is very an iconic film. All the films are actually iconic films of their times. We see Guru Dutt is standing just at the corner of the scene. Uh, if you know the story, you can actually re uh, instantly relate. It is so very palpable that the, the internal strife dies and the, the, the sense of lo loss and loss of control rather is very, very visible in his expression. And to highlight that, the light has been focused on his face and uh, everything is uh, immersed, uh, immersed in a darkness. And here, Jojita Vahi Sikandar, where the Pahela Nasha song is this one, where the young uh, teenage boy is in love he is feeling like he is flying to show his uh, butterfly in stomach uh, in, um, like feeling. It is shown that how there is a background of sky and high mountain and he's standing on top of something and he's throwing a shirt. These things are done magically. That is why we call movies magic. But where exactly this magic lies? So I will start with the basic of the cinematic language for us to understand. And if uh, you speak, sir, permits, I would like to have another session where I'll, in detail, I'll do it, the specific perspective of Indian cinema. And uh, for that, this is just the starter. So can we uh, go to the next slide, please? So this is what roughly I have planned to talk about today. Just this basics of cinematic language. We know the first one, obviously, is awesome. We all have heard of it, I'm sure. So this is basically, and then camera, sound, and editing. These are the things I'm going to deal with uh, today. And then I will uh, do a short task. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't manage any Indian film video, so I just did a Titanic song shot here, like uh, one uh, video I got it. So I like do I like to do that later uh, later part of my lecture. But right now, let us focus on this one. So I'll start to uh, start with Mizon scene. Uh, next si slide, please. So what do we understand by Mizon scene? Technically, everything what we see on scene. It can be everything starting from the costume of the artist, makeup. And then blocking, that means where our uh, main character is placed in the stage or in the scene. Then the props, what are the props being used? Then the characters, light and shit and everything. So one thing is said that nothing that we see on a scene, or like a, a shot rather in a scene of a film that is there without prior knowledge of the director or the makeup. Everything is placed intentionally starting from what color of clothes the actors will wear, then what color would be the wall, uh, what kind of furniture you want to put, everything is predetermined. Now, um, if we remember three dates, for example, if we remember three dates, there was one scene when uh, they take back to this, they think of this 80s film, if you remember. Uh, so the rancho is telling uh, that uh, the family, when I think of my friend's family, it reminds me of the 70s or 80s film. Instantly, everything goes into dark, black and white setup. The mother is uh, making rotis, the father is coughing, and the sister is crying. This sort of things are happening. So each and everything that we see on scene is an intentional doing. We do it 
to make mm-hmm. some statement knowingly or unknowingly we actually take those statements indian cinema from the beginning is very prone to do that now if we go back to the history of indian cinema it starts r- roughly it starts at the same time with the world cinema with lumiere brothers um, showing their short films in ni- 1895 and 96 it came in bombay around 96 and that is the exact time when um, the indian filmmakers started thinking uh, why can't we make the uh, similar kind of film so the first though uh, savi dada was the first person to make very two sh- very two short films which are i think right now they are not available so the first uh, recognized feature f- uh, feature length film was a silent film obviously we all know that is dada saheb phalke's 1913 to raja horish chandra and if we see raja horish chandra is followed by many other religious and mythological films by phalke and other makers of the time so when we go back to uh, raja horish chandra what we see is it is made with the very basic equipment available we all know that how falke had to go to uh, he had he, he had to sell off his wife's jewelry to learn how to make films and finally he made this film and uh, unfortunately only two or three reels are available right now with the uh, archive but uh, the interesting even at that time how he using the film techniques but from there 1913 to 2020 more than a century we have progressed a lot so this is a time we uh, we see a lot of computer uh, uh, generated uh, graphics and a lot of high and modern technology are imported like uh, used in this uh, today's uh, film so i wanted to show you a netflix clip unfortunately uh, i couldn't make that that didn't work out because it is not available over youtube so i can just uh, tell you today's netflix era like we call it a time of a web series and netflix so that is the same indian cinema that has traveled this far from falke to netflix and it has gone through a drastic change but the thing is what what actually has changed the the people are same we are the same human beings things are same 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 pain same joys and same feelings then why is the thing that has changed the change is in the technique how you present things so the next uh, i will go to the next slide please go to the next slide the so next i will start with this mise en scene and montage andre maja had said a very nice thing so he actually divided all the filmmakers in these two categories either you make films with mise en scene or you make montages montages are many scenes together making one series of narrative whereas uh, mise en scene using mise en scene is like one scene one shot giving you a lot of meaning so when we go to the experimental uh, films when we talk about experimental cinema we see mostly how one shot is very much detached from other shots and how they present diff- completely uh, uh, unrelated ideas sporadically and uh, exclusively and that is the beauty of uh, experimental cinema so when we talk about the mainstream cinema that we are uh, not the art house cinema per se we usually see a linear narrative so i unfortunately i do not have time to to talk about the narratives but definitely linear narrative when the story flows in a line and we know what exactly uh hello dear panala uh, is there something uh, okay so yeah um uh, sorry so uh, now uh, when we see um uh, the sorry i just got lost yeah so um when the, with this connection of montages this montages are like uh, it's a story in a form of a narrative a linear narrative that one shot follow, follows the other one so 
Uh, we understand what is exactly happening. I do not know what is the last film you have uh, watched. So usually when I talk about these things, I usually refer back because uh, last time when I talked the same thing, it was in public, like people were in front of me. So I asked what is the last film that you have watched. So I am presuming the last film you have watched is Dil Wale Dulhaniya Le Chayenge for, for my benefit of understanding. So if we remember... There are two very iconic scenes from Dilwale Dulhaniya Le Jayenge. One is in that uh, that mustard field where Shahrukh is running, Shahrukh is standing, Kajol is running towards him, which is actually uh, another complementing another scene, and the last scene when Kajol is running to catch the train when uh, Shahrukh is leaving, and uh, the father, like Amrish Puri, says Ja Simran Ja. So that is a very iconic scene, which actually has a parallel to the scene in this uh, that uh, mustard will, and also the scene in the Paris train, where actually Kajol is also pulled into the train by Shah Rukh Khan. So actually making it a circle, kind of a circle, train in Europe to train in India. And that circle actually tells us a very important information. So the important information is the feelings, the Indianness, the very imp uh, important concept. I am getting a feedback. Is it me or something else? Okay. So that there is a connection between this, and that is actually showing that Akhir Dil Hai Hindustani, the 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 basic concept that the era, that times films like Pardes or Dil Wale Dulhaniya. These films actually were promoting that no matter where you are, you are, your heart is actually Indian. The reason behind that, obviously, we know this is a time that previously, like 70s onward, like by 90s, there is a huge Indian diaspora taking place all over the world, especially in USA and in Europe. So obviously, the urge to show that no matter where you are, your heart is Indian, is in India, is a very important concept, and that is being reiterated in the films of that particular time. And if we do scene by scene uh, analysis, we will see this thing is coming up. Anuna, can you please go to the next slide? So I will go to the camera thing uh, first. I'll start how these things are achieved by the uh, filmmakers or directors and cinematographers. So the first thing comes about the camera height and angle. Obviously, we know that when a camera is placed above us, like when the character shows, uh, character is being viewed from the angle or upper angle, which is a high angle, that is actually uh, showing that uh, character to be vulnerable. So, and similarly, when it, the character is shown from a low angle, it shows the character to be powerful. Similarly, a camera fall from top to low, top to bottom, like when the camera is actually panning from top to down, is like a, it's a tilting rather. We call this a, like tilting from up to down. It is actually a, creating the sense of awe. Similarly, down to up, it's creating a sense of a, a, like debilitating, uh, belittling. Sorry, a sense it creates. So. Similarly, high angle to, as I have written, it, it shows diminishing a shot and then overhead shot gives you the God's eye view. Mm -hmm. I wish I could have given example for all the shots here, but uh, I couldn't incorporate them. But eagle eye shots are those which is taken exactly from the top of the character's head. It gives you a pan vision of the whole thing. So usually any scene of some disaster, some, uh, some for example, that's why I have taken Titanic. In Titanic, there are a lot of scenes that you can see where the camera is taken from the eagle eye view to show the havoc that Titanic has wrecked. The havoc, uh, Titanic is in a complete mess. When we see that, it is taken from that, uh, that angle. Then obviously, Dutch angle is when uh, like tilted camera, we do not see the, uh, the character sitting straight. It, is, it shows that it is like tilted, crooked angle. It is, it is safe. The crooked angle, it creates the sense of dislocation because we usually put camera in the, in the perspective, the angle of this eye level. You know, when I put the camera in eye level, I actually can uh, see my characters as normal without giving any judgment. 
So the moment I'm lifting my camera up, I am giving you a judgment. I'm belittling that character. Also, when I'm taking my camera down, I'm trying to glorify the character. Now, my audience, without even understanding, seeing those things. For example, there is one scene, if you remember, when uh, Kabhi Kushi Kabhi Gam, there when we see that, uh, rather even in Mohabbate, Amitabh Bachchan is being most of the time shown from a low angle camera to show his power and dominance. But once Shah Rukh Khan tells, I hope we all, all have watched Mohabbate, when Shah Rukh Khan tells that, see, I am the man who actually dated your girl, your daughter, who died because you didn't allow us to get married. That moment of shattering, we see Amitabh Bachchan standing in front of Aishwarya Rai's picture, a, a framed picture on the wall, and we see the camera is slowly panning up. It is showing how old and feeble the character of the father, lonely father is. The camera slowly pans, it actually zooms back and shows the vast, like the wide angle of the room and shows how lonely he is. These things we do not uh, actually do not pay attention while watching films, but this is this is how things are created. The master filmmakers actually use these techniques to create the uh, desired effect. So, uh, so can we go to the next slide, please? So, uh, also the, then it is you know, the camera is going on, so uh, we can see the static shot when the, it's it is usually. The camera is steadily put somewhere and you see the characters are moving. It creates a sense of drama. Like, for example, when we, like rather theater, not a drama, it's a theater. When we see uh, on stage somebody, all our focus is on all actors there. Similarly, when the camera is uh, like in a static, it is in a static shot setup, we see how the characters seen on screen rather acting with each other and uh, how they are talking. It is more uh, uh, preferable by the genre of drama. The film's drama genre usually use this sort of uh, setup to show the inner conflict and the dialogues and so on. Pan shots, we know, obviously, when you uh, follow the character's eyes, like there is a shot that uh, you come to the room and you open the door and your room is in topsy-turvy condition, somebody must have uh, searched for something. If that is a shot, it would be the first uh, camera will be focusing on your face and then directly panning, almost see, showing you uh, some of the contents of the room and then focusing inside the room. It is almost creating the sense as if the audience, the immediacy, the audience is seeing him or herself like, okay, from here to there, this is what it is. So that is the pan shot, tail shot is moving up and down. So as I have said, it can to show, it, it, like it's very interesting if we see this West films, like wild, wild West film. So this uh, tail shots are very famous, like very common. They're usually tail, tail shots and hip range camera angles. So hip range camera angle to uh, show the bolsters. You know, the camera is placed where the bolster is can be seen and the, uh, the gun can be seen and from there it is focusing on the opponent so i do not see you from my eye i through my through, through my eyes but from my gun i'm seeing you so that kind of sentiment is used there and then obviously push in like the camera is uh, abruptly pushing in to create the sense of uh, the stress uh, like a significance and then pulling out is almost like the unlike the establishing shot, it usually the final shot it pulls out. Like uh, again, Titanic. I I will like show you. That is why I have kept this because all these shots I couldn't find in any single Indian film. That's why unfortunately I took it, Titanic as a, an example. And then obviously dolly zoom is when you are using a dolly to zoom in where the background is actually uh, moving and the st subject is remaining static. So that creates a sense of dislocation and the sense of a, what you call kind of a unsettling feeling it creates. Also it creates that conflict and uh, following the character obviously we know and the uh, so these are the uh, specific shots I wanted to talk about. So can we go to the next shot, please? 
I mean, sorry, next not next shot, next light. <laughs> I'm into the shot so much. I'm still still saying it's shot. <laughs> so the next thing we see is the sound. So when in on screen we see something, for example, a telephone is ringing and we hear the sound of the telephone ringing. It's a diegetic so uh, sound. But what if you do not see the source of the sound on scene? You see, you hear. somebody is singing some for example the background score or especially when uh, this is very important thing i wanted to uh, elaborate this one because in bollywood film this sound makes a very very a uh, great impact especially because it has background music background song and the dance sequences and if you think about the dance sequences what happens like a boy and a girl start dancing somewhere like in front of london bridge and suddenly many people start dancing but from where does the music come this is actually a very curious case of diegetic and non diegetic uh, sound why is that so because we see the singers and dancers but we do not see the musicians so it is a very curious blend and though the uh, we all know the musical the uh, the style of musical films of 50s and 60s hollywood is uh, slowly uh, musicals are there but they are not the prime hollywood thing however bollywood at least 5 years back at least that was the prime thing that you will have musical films where films will have a lot of songs and real time songs and dance sequences today also it is there for example i wanted to highlight one film that is in this uh, recent film that has come this is welcome for uh, that talks about uh, uh, there is a song i i hope you like if you have uh, heard uh, of this uh, if you have seen this uh, fi uh, film rather Mm, that uh, the uh, this is the uh, just a minute. Ah, uh, if I have this, ah, uh, uh, yeah. So uh, the welcome four song that is Bala, that is welcome four song. Ah, uh, or welcome back. Just I lost it. I guess yeah. So that song, if we see, that is a actually going back and forward in time. So there is a ah uh, like uh, reincarnation theme is going on. And if we see that song Bala, uh, that Bala song. we see akshay kumar dancing in a very modern tune modern song however it is set in some uh, 500 years back so that is a very interesting setup and usage of sound there is very interesting because we see obviously if a character was there in like 14th and 15th century he would not have so uh, he would not have danced that way definitely and that sort of music would not have been there and we see the belly dancers all around and the music and the kind of movement definitely they are very much 21st century thing however it is it is supposed to be something set 500 years back so what is happening there it is actually appropriating time through sounds like though it is a comedy but it is trying to appropriate time like something that happens in 21st century appropriating that in time in 20 uh, like 16th or 15th or 14th century that is done through sound and uh, sound has the power of doing it because visually things are uh, uh, like putting things there like they could not have put a mobile phone or a mac macintosh there because that would have been totally absurd similarly the putting the sound effects of 21st century there is equally absurd however we do not find it absurd we enjoy that because sound has the power of doing it and then obviously the next thing we see contrapuntal sound that says that you are showing a murder scene on scene uh, like on or like on screen and behind it is playing a music of peace or tranquility what happens is this is a kind of a, like contrasting the mood to actually enhance we all uh, know this uh, uh, like like there is a um, the uh, that that uh, the theme of like for example child like child's um, uh, nursery rhymes children uh, nursery rhymes are used in horror films if we have noticed so sometimes the child possessed by a ghost is a uh, singing some nursery rhymes it's a very common thing by horror it's a common uh, tactics of a, a horror film maker the reason behind is the moment we create this sort of a contrast the tension 
uh, gets very high. One example I would like to give, though this is not an Indian film, The Shining. I'm I'm sure most of us have heard and watched the film The Shining. The contrapuntal sound and this contrast and uh, juxtaposition of contrasting images, absolutely um fantastic there. There is one scene when the little guy is actually playing in uh, playing with uh, his toys. It's a very famous scene, playing with playing with his uh, small car toys, and uh, suddenly a ball comes, and there is a cut, and the boy stands up and calls mom, and then the the there is a cut. To it just completely a cut from that scene. So that music. That that soothing baby playing there, a uh, music of that is accompanied by an eerie silence, which enhances the effect. So that is how contrapuntal sound actually works. The next one when we are talking about the L cut and J cuts. When we talk about L cut, is like when the uh, some sound that carries from the former to the later shot. And usually, uh, this is done in the editing. Actually, uh, editing part when we do a jump cut and match cut, match cut and jump cut. I'll come to that later. So usually, we use this L cut and J cut when the next scene sound. For example, next scene there is a uh, telephone to ring. I am seeing here. Say I am in a war front and I hear ringing a telephone and ringing of a telephone and then. Uh, the scene goes to a jump cut to the next scene, and we hear the we see actually the telephone to ring. These all elements are used to create some of the other kind of uh, sentiment. Can we go to the next slide? I think I'm also running uh, uh, like the time is also coming to the end of it. So yeah, so definitely I'll make it short. And uh, obviously this is the piece of the narrative. Editing is the one that. Uh, that creates the pace of the narrative. So, for example, if you remember Padmavat, if you have seen Padmavat, there is a one very interesting thing that in the whole film, Padmaba, uh, sorry, Padmavati and uh, Kilji, they do not share screen presence. They do not share the same screen. Last final scene is about Johar when uh, Padmavati was going for. Uh, her last right, her Jahar, and here Kilji is coming running. If you see, this is a long, it's not one shot, but the sequence rather. The shot sequence is very wrong. Long, sorry, not wrong, long. And one shot is being a match cut sometimes to the next shot. The movement that Padmavati is walking and Kilji is jumping, it is creating a sense of. Uh, like one is running towards his ego, his uh, fulfillment of desire. Kilji is doing that, and uh, Padmavati is uh, running towards towards her feeling what she thinks her love's fulfillment lies. Um, uh, before I go further, I'd like to tell you these are not my views. These are the views definitely that the uh, film tries to portray through this cinematic language. So that is why. So yeah, that actually continues for a long time and the moment finally Kilji comes, the door gets closed and if you have seen that in 3D, you will see the sparks of fires are actually coming up even then. So and the door gets closed and the frustration of Kilji is shown from like Kilji sits and the camera actually pans him. So this at any film, any sequence is actually match of all these things together. We get the sound, we get the cuts, we get the camera, we get the light, everything together make this. Then obviously we know the, uh, I have given some examples here, cross cutting we know like when two people are talking together. The so first cut is on your face and the next cut, uh, cut is on my face showing that we, you and I, we are talking over phone. Similarly, uh, we have uh, the uh, jump cuts to uh, shorten the time. Like I'm driving for an hour, so usually it will not show on screen for an hour, right? How do I show that, that I'm driving for an hour? It can be done through jump cut. One sequence, I'm here or like uh, on my driving wheel, then the next cut, can, uh, then the next shot can focus from, the, from, uh, from behind, from, uh, from front, anywhere. So jump cut actually cre uh, creates the um, 
it actually narrows the time if you have seen dhoni ms dhoni the untold story the final world cup scene if you remember that is actually the uh, that jump cut like dhoni is uh, like giving giving the six and six and six that sort of shots are together compiled obviously he didn't uh, like uh, uh, made he didn't make three sixes together there were time in between it is actually condensed within that short span of time then obviously fed in and fade out happens the when one shot uh, one uh, like it fades in another sh or shot comes in then overlapping also happens i would like to talk about a bit of this smash cut that actually suddenly it's it's very a very powerful tool to use if only you know how to use it it is just you see a serene going on going on suddenly boom a bomb blast how do you create that sense of the jolting the sense of shock with this smash cut you do nothing you show the sereneness and the next scene you just make a camera uh, shake and uh, something happens something comes very close to the lens that kind of shocking thing happens in the smash cut and obviously uh, uh, with this cross object crossing that we say uh, this invisible cuts these days is very easy that is why again i have taken titanic where i will show how this um, invisible cut is done through merging two scenes of old titanic when it was uh, floating and then this decayed titanic okay so uh, i think we are like coming to the end of it so can we uh, go to the next slide please so here i wanted to show you the video so uh, on next please can you play the video i think it will be better yes, if you can i'll, I'll just uh, yeah, play yeah, the yeah, video yeah, yeah. Okay. the moment you start uh, you you tell me to start I'll, yeah you uh, can st just uh, make it mute and start so that i can just keep on saying what i have to say thank you so much i hope i'm audible so you can see this uh, how the camera is panning from low and up and from the section of third class uh, wow, like passenger then to the first class passenger so this is creating kind of like a juxtaposition of two world that exactly titanic talks about and you see to see, show the grandeur the camera angle gets down and then to uh, then from the top we can see jack and then you, the scene where i'm where i'm um, the king of the world obviously the camera actually pans from top just to give the sheer grandeur of the uh, ship and then we see the scene that how jack is seeing um uh, uh, seeing uh, rose from down and if you see the camera is focusing from down to rose just to show rose is from a high class and it is showing jack uh, from the uh, angle high angle because jack belongs to the low class see how it is uh, focusing uh, on rose and then you can see how it is focusing on jack's face and then the stars obviously the original scene after that you see rose running if you see this situation here also the, you see the cut seconds it's like 2 seconds each cut if you see each each shots for 2 seconds rather it seen is for 2 seconds you see this is obviously again the camera and uh, you see how it's focusing on particular things that it wants to highlight here it is rose and then it is being just posed with a shot of the precious diamond necklace so it is like the precious things together plus together one precious thing that is rose the and love that is being highlighted through the film that for love one person is ready to give his life on the other the mercenary um, uh, those uh, people of the the the, the capitalist uh, the, the rose's fiance he was a rich capitalist for him it was most important to preserve the diamond necklace rather than the emotion of uh, his fiance so 
also this is exactly the last scene of titanic where we see titanic uh, from the old glory to the broken dismantled titanic ship under the water then we see how from there in the dream of rose that ship becomes the new ship and the it with its glory and glamour so all the shots here because I, i'm I here uh, while i am seeing it it is coming late i guess it's just uh, getting uh, jittery so i don't know actually in my screen it is stuck i don't know which place it is showing right now yeah it's showing the boil the scene yeah so here especially the holding hand and uh, go like doing this ringa ringa sort of thing it is actually the camera focuses on uh, one person's face from the view the angle of the other so that is how it is shot and if you see this scene this is the iceberg and how each shot has importance this each and every shot here is actually very important shot in the film that's why they're compiled here you see the iceberg seen from the point of view of the those crew members and then how it is hitting then finally the 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 ship is sinking however this is a time when these two lovers are actually being there and how look at the camera focusing on their love as well as the the fireworks on the sky this is the final scene when the ship uh, breaks but their love exists so we see how even after the ship wreck these two people are ready to be in love forever one till his both of them till they uh, till they die rather so this is how basically the whole film is done within this 3 minutes of okay thank you honor night is done within the 3 minutes of this uh, this set i intend to do this same thing on the netflix series that is come like it's coming on actually it is done there it is already there so let's see if we can make it so it will be easy for us to understand the uh, better so there i uh, end my talk here i hope i could do justice to the topic thanks a lot from the bottom of my heart especially to pandi sir for being there and being my moral support <laughs> so i was very nervous <laughs> and also adonna for presenting and konkadi i can see uditha and everybody from shurendranath college thanks a lot thank you so much uh, dr rituparna das uh, it was a beautiful presentation beautifully explained vividly explained and at the same time you exemplif exemplified it through this uh, beautiful video uh, taking into consideration the sound the shots everything in detail you talked about it thank you so much uh, for your contribution if anybody has any question any query please you may ask anyone has any query any question you may please ask okay 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 so i'll take that uh, no one has any question uh, yet so um, the feedback uh, link has been posted in the chat box all you have to do is follow the link and please submit uh, the feedback form give your name give your email addresses correctly and once again thank you so much uh, dr ritu karna das for this uh, enlightening session uh, thank you all to... thank you for listening to me patiently <laughs> thanks a lot thanks thanks to all the participants i'm sure they have enjoyed it thoroughly and uh, i would like to extend my heartfelt gratitude to the teachers of our department who have been working relentlessly uh, and making this uh, web lecture series a successful one because we have been uh, uh, we have been receiving accolades and uh, uh, from from academicians and uh, scholars from all over the country they have praised our effort but uh, of course special thank uh, special thank goes to our hod dr uma shankar pandey sir i would also uh, mention about the other uh, our other teachers who have been supporting us so very much shotobroto uh, paul sir uh, shravani mukhopadhyay madam konka mojumdar madam pushu shirai shen gupto madam atoshi bhatacharya and jyoti sho thank you so much for working so hard for making this entire series a uh, such a successful one uh, yes Special thanks goes to our HOD, Dr. Uma Shankar Pandey sir. Sir, uh, please, the last words for this session must be yours. Please say something, please. Uh, 
thank you so much for this uh, fabulous presentation i mean this was so comprehensive and at the same time so lucidly presented i mean i'm sure uh, i enjoyed a lot and everybody uh, the students uh, and the other uh, attendees you know they have uh, uh, learned a lot from today's presentation and thank you very much uh, for for uh, you know presenting in this series as uh, onona said we started on 22nd august and uh, you know this is the eighth in the series before i carry on i will uh, uh, ask if anyone wants to say something uh, god sir would you want to say something today uh, suresh god ji uh. okay so uh, the, the uh, language used was more technical like you know uh, the camera the sound and uh, that mission scene the first 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 slide was there so it was more of a technical nature and it's i became a bit nostalgic on this you know <laughs> there was there used to be a hindi film magazine called madhuri if yes, you have ever yes. heard the name yes, yes it is there yes it used to be published in 60s and 70s and yes. ceased to publish in 78 somewhere and and i wrote one article a lengthy article on baate film technique ki and uh, the topics you have covered in camera the shots everything you know i i you know elaborated every shot in detail you know in, in that article it was a lengthy article you know written somewhere in early 70s so um, my just you know i was you know, the the topic of your uh, this lecture was more on the technical side of yes. film but yes. actually the film is made on the editing table Yes. Whatever yes. you do, whatever scenes you take, shoot everything. But the finally, when the film, all Absolutely. the roles, all the tapes comes to the editing table, then the director, and the story writer, script writer, and and who the producer sits together. Yes. <laughs> these three people sits together on the editing table, and then finalize the film in one go. So, so it, it is said like oh, it is possible the whole day's show uh, like shot can be cancelled like in the editor any editor, any yeah, it can I, be cancelled totally I, I know there are many instances where the scenes were to be reshot you know after yes, yes. after even one year the oh, actor ka chehra bhi badal gaya <laughs> still they have to manage it because the film requires that yes. even i give you an example of film mother india yes the end of the film was not yes. liked by the audience in the in the in the cinema halls and there was hue and cry about the end of the scene yes the the produced the mr vimal roy asked the director rishikesh mukherjee to do a survey of the audience go and ask them what they want in the end they went to each and every hall after the film they asked even every audience sir kya kare bataye they advised them then they reshot the entire end of the film so you know this happens in film making the language of film is like this you know yes. that the the story writer writes the film Hmm. the restore the story the dialogue writer creates the dialogues the, the script, script writer writes the script yes. writer write the short shots yes. storyboarding so, you know, storyboard <laughs> everything so the story to dialogue writer to yes. storyboard then the cinematographer you know shooting the storyboard accordingly then the music director setting the each and every music in that way hmm. and the finally the actor and the editor the most important yes. person uh, uma in any mm. film making is the editor of the film yes right if you have a good editor you have then the film will be so good i'm sure about it that i have seen so the editing part is the most important you know thing to tell the real language of the story yes you film kya so these are my yes. and my i must say your this uh, this uh, you know presentation was very good i i was Thank very you, sir. keenly listening to your words <laughs> Thank each you, and sir. every word and i really enjoyed it really. Thank, you so much, Thank, you so Thank you so much sir congratulations to you Thank you so much. Thank you so much. In fact, sir, as you have said this, it reminded me of one thing. You know, Ghore Bai, the Shottajit Rai's film. There is one sh- uh, one scene where actually the overhead uh, microphone was visible, but uh, they couldn't redo that shot afterwards because there is some uh, issue. So it's an interesting thing to even know. Shottajit you, Rai's film. <laughs> you took the name of Shottajit Rai. It was in 1973 January. Yeah. I was I was in Jaipur, and the mm-hmm. shooting of film Sonar Kela was going on. Okay. In, in a nearby fort, and in the morning walk, I used to go to that fort daily. Mm-hmm. So I saw the film unit, and I am I am a student of film making actually. Okay. So my, my core interest is film making. So I requested Satyajit Ray, can I be a part of the entire unit? I would be here to assist. Wow. You. I was there to attend a marriage of my cousin for four days, 
<laughs> and I stayed there for one month only for that film shooting. <laughs> okay. And became very close to everybody. The all artists I remember: Somitra Chatterjee, Soma Sonar Kela. That very young guy and the girl I don't remember now. So that was the time in 1973 January. I'm telling you. So the Satyajitra, the kind of filmmaking, how you used to write the script, how you used to direct. You know, I have seen his you know direction. He he used to have the script in his hand, and the entire scene is created on the right or left side of the dialogue. And I follow the same system of Satyajitra. And I followed the technique when I direct a play. I create the entire scene on the script, and how the actor will move from here to there or there. And this is the this is I learned from Satyajit Ray. So big director. Wonderful experience. Yeah. Wonderful yeah, experience. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, God Sir, for your uh, you know, sharing all these wonderful. Uh, right. These are all my experiences. Yeah. I have shared it because Thank. it was this interest language of Indian cinema. Thank so you. So this is of my interest. That's why I joined. Very. Well, please do. And thank you're you welcome one. to join in future. Thank you well. for this. Th you are you are welcome to join in future as well. Uh, oh, definitely, and, definitely. And, and I'm sure that you know a lot of our students who watch it for the first time, and when they watch a film the next time, they'll realize that the cinema itself, you know, is its own language. Can know? mean yes. so many things. Yes. Yeah, and, and it can mean so many things. You know, the way you yes. place the camera, to yes. the way you yes. cut it, to the way you uh, yes. move, move it, and the, the way and the montage, for example. So this is a. Very good uh, discussion for for I all of us. I would suggest I would suggest your students to join film appreciation course every summer. You know all the film institutes offer this course in May yeah, and June this. every every year and very very cheap. No no much fees. So in two months you will understand how a film is created and Absolutely. made and you can how to appreciate a film language. So your students should do it. I should do thank it. you, thank you so much. Thank so you, start thank you. starting from uh, 22nd August when we had a, a, a web lecture on uh, newspaper design with scribes to 5th September we had a web lecture on uh, introduction to communication research and then again on uh, 12th we had one on uh, uh, development communication then on uh, uh, 19th September we had one on uh, digital media if i'm not wrong on 26th September we had one on uh, is there some uh, song Yeah. Uh, 26th we had on contemporary uh, sports journalism. Then on 4th of October we had on uh, information society. Uh, 10th October we had one on uh, uh, you know combating infodemic and today language of Indian cinema. Uh, in two days time we'll be having another web lecture on uh, uh, the platform society and then uh, after a short break we'll be back in November with the series again. So again, I thank uh, all my colleagues. You know, Shottu Brato Paul, Ushushi Rai, Shen Gupta, Konka Mojumdar, Shabuni Mukherjee, Anunna Sen, Atushi Bhattacharya, Jyoti Shah uh, for for this this fabulous series. Thank especially to uh, Dr. Das. You know for. For for making this happen because the entire last pleasure season, is all mine, sir. Thanks a lot for giving me this opportunity. <laughs> no, no, this is really really fabulous because we know you know it's been so much of hard work for the last fifteen uh, days because of the uh, online examination. Yes. And presenting this kind of a uh, you know presentation is, is is tough job because you know you have to make it uh, uh, accessible to everybody and that you know each and every. Uh, And I'm sure, uh, uh, as you know, we'll be putting it out on YouTube for our uh, uh, students and for others, and it will be available for everybody. There was a question on the chat box about uh, when will you get your e-certificates. Uh, I think the person who put the question is uh, probably attending it for the first time. Uh, you'll be surprised to know within the next one hour you'll uh, get the e-certificate. So that's how uh, you know uh, efficient we are. Okay. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much again, you know everybody for joining. This is this has been a really uh, wonderful series, and uh, uh, thanks again to all colleagues for working behind the scenes and you know working on the scene and uh, everything. Thank you everybody. Thanks a lot. <coughs> My thanks to Ananya also. Yeah, thanks. Um, yes, thank you. Thank, thank you all. Thank you. Thank thank you. Th thanks Ananya for for a wonderful moderation, and thanks to uh, Jyoti and Atoshi and Ushoshi and everybody for for uh, you know the background technical work. Thanks a lot, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, all the part to all the participants for being here today. And uh, the feedback link is posted in the chat box. Please follow the link, fill up the feedback form, submit. Thank you so much again, once again for attending. So we'll sign off for today. Thank you so much.